trauma that you yourself have experienced, you just go ahead and tap when I tap. If you're a surrogate tapping for somebody else, either a family or a friend or an animal or a herd of animals, you can start by saying, I am your name. So I would say, I am Jeannie tapping for and then you would state the name of the being that you're tapping for. So for me, I'm going to tap for myself, but I'm also going to tap for um, my horses. So I would say, I am Jeannie, tapping for Jeannie and for Zora and for all of the horses that I can bring into this circle at this time who have been broke to ride in the normal way. All the horses who have had a human get on their back without an extensive dialogue and exchange of love and permission first from the horse. Because when people do things to us that they think are fine, but for our species, our bodies tell us we're in extreme danger and we may be about to be killed or eaten. We can't really override those things. Even though that experience was so incredibly frightening, even though it was possibly the most terrifying thing I have ever experienced, maybe ever will experience, even though I felt like I was going to die, I didn't know whether I was dying or not. I couldn't actually figure out what was going on. My terror, my primal terror, froze me in just this state of horror. And my amygdala primal brain took over. And I wondered if I was dying. I wondered if I would die if this was the end. And the terror of that is uh, pretty deep, pretty undescribable. It's left an imprint deep in my cells and my tissues. It's now an energetic and cellular level body memory. And I don't know how I'm ever going to let that go. I don't know how I'm ever going to trust again in the person or species that did that to me. And nonetheless, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Such a terrifying experience. That was just terror beyond any terror. Pure primal brain amygdala response terror. I thought I was going to die. I didn't know if I was already dying. I didn't know what was happening. I was shocked beyond any level of shock I've ever experienced. I couldn't believe this person was doing this to me. What were they doing? Were they crazy? Had they just suddenly gone completely psychotic and lost their mind? This person I loved and trusted? Why? Why would they do something like that to me? How could they just turn on me like that? 
I thought they loved me. I thought I could trust them. I didn't always understand them. I didn't always feel perfectly safe around them, but I never, ever, ever imagined they could do something like that to me. Something just so completely off the charts, psycho. I don't understand why. If they needed me to understand something, couldn't there have been a kinder, gentler, slower way to communicate that to me? Did they really have to completely terrorize me? Was that really necessary? Was there really no other way of communicating with me? Doing that to my body communicated to my primal amygdala brain that I was being killed. That I was in the process of being taken down for food. Why would they want to do that to me? What do they think I could possibly learn in such a state of terror? Absolute primal run for my life terror. Or free, frozen, completely frozen in shock and dissociation. Because when I think I'm going to die, I got to leave my body. That's part of nature's gift to us. That's part of the adrenaline response and the hormone cascade that follows. We don't feel any pain in the moment. We feel nothing. We're numb. You could stab me 10 times with a knife. I wouldn't feel it because that's the body's gift. You feel it afterwards, but you don't feel it in the middle of the attack. Why would they think that was a good way, a good state to put me in, to teach me anything, to communicate anything to me? And if it was purely about domination, look how much more powerful I am than you. Well, that worked. But how can I ever trust you again? How can I ever trust them again? Even though it's much later now, how can I ever get free of this primal fear response when I see them? When I have to interact with them? and dialogue with them and they ask me to do things. And even though I may still love them, part of me is still frozen, locked in that place of terror, in that place of freeze, fight or flight but to the most extreme level where I believe my life is at stake. Where the cells and tissues and hormones and brain synapses are all screaming at me. You're being killed. You are about to be eaten. So even though I experienced such pure terror, such an attack and invasion, such an obliteration,
such a loss of trust, power, connection, communication, respect, love. Even though I experienced all those things over and over again, or maybe just one super, super bad time. I wonder if there's a way to release all that trauma. I wonder if there's a way I can release that primal terror from my cells and my tissues and my bones, from my energetic, etheric body. Release that terror and horror from all the levels of my being. I wonder if there's a way to do that. I sure would be open to that. Because there's nothing to be gained from staying in this state. There's no warning or learning to take with me to keep me safe next time. That's normally the function of fear and terror is to act as a warning and a messaging system that we don't engage in that activity or behavior again. That's not applicable to this situation. I would like to move forward. I wonder if it's possible for me to move forward. I wonder if it's possible for me to experience the same things happening with my body, but done gently and with an, a relationship of, of utmost trust and kindness and respect. Oh no, I can never trust again. That's just asking too much. They hurt me too much. It was too shocking. I was too damaged. I'm just never gonna come back from that. I'm just never gonna feel safe around them again. But what if I could? What if there was some way, if they changed, if they had no longer any desire to do that to me again, if I could somehow know for sure that they would not do that to me again and that they're sorry, that they are deeply deeply cognizant and sorry for all the pain and trauma that caused me. I wonder if then there would be a way that I could let this go, that I could give them another chance, that I could start again. So I'm just feeling like moving my body right now. If you feel like yawning or burping, those are all signs of release. Just go ahead, let your body do that. So even though part of me believes I can never let this go, I can never go back to the trust and ease and camaraderie we had before. That we could never have the love, trust that we had before. There's another more spiritually mature part of me that would like that to happen. 
can see how that could be a good thing for both of us. That spiritually mature part of me sees how letting go of this trauma could lead me to a deeper, richer relationship with them, with all of life. I'd rather have that than stay small and scared, traumatized, contracted. If I can let go of this, only with only with the people that it's warranted to let go of it. Only with those who are trustworthy, who are capable of shift and being different and treating me different. With those people, perhaps I could open to a whole new world of lightness, fun, adventure, games, interesting things, challenging things, but not terrifying things. Not things that I'm forced to do with no regard and no respect for my personhood, for the fact that I'm a sentient being and I have freedom of will. I too have freedom of choice. It is my divine right. It is my divine commission. And maybe, just maybe, when I'm with people who understand that, maybe I could let go of this trauma and be open to a different experience. A different experience with them with life, with relationship, with myself. Perhaps I could open to a greater feeling of peace and ease. And maybe, just maybe, a little more safety. That would be cool. What would it be like to feel safe around them again? Oh, I can hardly imagine that. What would it feel like to feel safe in their love? To trust in our connection? Part of me says that's never gonna happen. They've damaged me too much. This was too far, I can never come back from this. That spiritually mature part of me just doesn't want to give it up. That spiritually mature part of me says transformation is possible. Just like the butterfly can completely transform from a furry, creepy crawly caterpillar to this amazing creature of flight. Maybe, just maybe, people can transform too. Consciousness can transform too. Relationship can transform that dramatically. Maybe, just maybe, that can happen. I would love to be open to that possibility. My mind, body, and spirit would love to open to the possibility of a new paradigm between us. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what that's going to feel like. But I would like to open to the possibility of that occurring, of that growing and blossoming. My mind, body, and spirit opening now. Opening now. Opening now. Opening right now. Opening now. 
mind, body, and spirit. Opening now. Opening now. Opening right now. Opening now. If any other thoughts or feelings or yes buts are coming up for you, feel free to just keep tapping them through on your own. Just make up your own words and tap through the points. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Let your body guide you, let your emotions guide you. Just keep tapping. And if you can't remember the points, just tap here and here. That's enough. It's enough to access the meridian system. That's enough to initiate that dialogue between the mind and the body and the energetic body. Namaste. Mm -hmm.